All right. Uh, back for another Monday stream here. Uh, I think we have just the drums in for this song so far. So I'm going to hit play. We're going to take a listen and hopefully move forward to getting our bass guitar. I think we're going to skip the percussion for the moment, try and get our drums and bass going and build the mix from there. So let's take a listen. All right, it's, it's a good start so far. We're gonna start back at the kick drum here and do a little balance of everything before we move on to try and get our bass guitar going here. All right, sounded pretty good with our kick drum here. Could probably use a little more top end on the snare. Better? Maybe a little more bottom. Cool, stick with our kick. Maybe a touch more bottom on our toms here. I could use more bottom too. Better.
Pull out a little more mids here. Cool, little bottom end from the from the room. Same thing here, I'm gonna pull out more mids. I don't want things getting too uh too muddy. See, I still feel like I need more bottom here. That's a little better. Better, much, much, much better. So we've got our base split trick going. I'm gonna start with a high pass. Pull out a little bit of this guy here. Kinda honky. Before we do anything else, I'm going to get some compression on and we're going to go quite a bit hard with this. We don't have a lot of top end to cut through the mix, so if we push harder into our compressor, it'll even out our bass sound, and it's also going to give us some slight distortion. And something I kind of saw that I want to try is using the API to add uh, mids here. So we're going to add 800 and some 5K. So a little bit of that.
We're gonna add some 4K though instead on the top. And maybe instead of this guy, let's add some, some something a little lower, 700. Yeah, there's that bite. Seems like a big boost, but... I want to see what multiband's going to do for us here. Looks like we're getting a little heavy-handed here. Some of these reverbs are running too hot that aren't even in use. Uh, we won't need this. And uh, I haven't used slap delay in quite a while. And then these two for the moment, we'll nuke these. All right, let's get our multi band set here. So. We've got our multiband set to just 180 hertz and below, so that's all we're gonna compress here. And set it really even. Actually, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap this guy for the moment. So we're gonna get our low end even before we boost it here. So let's try this again. Better. Now let's boost bottom.
I'm gonna check just our bottom end here. Below 100 and see where we're sitting. Not bad. We went all the way up there, but adds a little noise, but that's okay. All right, let's get our piano in. So we have a lot of instruments, as you can see, so I'm gonna go a little bit higher with the high pass here to save room for everything. We don't wanna over overrun everything with a bunch of low mids. Little compression. And some top. Some 4K. Get that brightness in the piano. All right, so our piano and our acoustic guitar are gonna make up the main instruments of our track here. Good sounding acoustic guitar. Um, sometimes I like when they're nice and woofy. Uh, it gives us a, a bigger perception and we can always roll that off earlier. How do I, how am I doing gain staging? I think that's what that says. Uh, sometimes uh, the side piece here covers part of the comment. How do I do gain staging? Um, I don't really go through and do gain staging. As long as there's not anything that's jumping up too crazy wise, I kind of just go through as I pull instruments up. As I'm importing tracks or if I'm recording the track, the gain staging is getting built into the track if I'm recording it. If I'm importing tracks to mix from an artist, I'll kind of just visually look. If there's something that looks too loud, I'll take a listen and pull it down. I don't want anything jumping over like negative 12, negative 10 when I pull it in. I'm usually kind of setting around 
like negative nine here in the middle uh, if I'm pulling anything down. I don't find myself pushing anything up, but sometimes I'll get toms that are too low. Uh, but then again, if we look at stuff like this, like shakers and tambourine, if I push those up to be sitting around negative nine, when I put them in the track, I'll have to pull the fader down so far because they're transient driven instruments. So you have to be careful sometimes with stuff like that. But anywhere from negative 12 to negative nine is a good space for me to have it, that I have enough headroom if I need to push it up and it's at a good volume that I can pull it down without having to push the fader too low. Uh, but it's kind of visual for me. Like these guys here look a little loud, so I might kind of just grab them and bump them down 3 dB or the, the 12 string, same thing there, might bump that down 3 dB. If the slide guitar is too quiet, I can bump it up 3D, 3 dB, but it's not something I go through and it's not a process I'm doing. I kind of do it visually as I import tracks. Uh, other than that, it's not something I'm, I'm going through and like this is my gain staging section of the song. Uh, anywho, let's jump back to the acoustic guitar here. Again, I'm gonna go a little bit too far with this. I'm gonna go just a touch more aggressive on this bridge section because it's the loudest part of the song. better. Let's get some, some air in there. Could be a little brighter. So look at these these two guitars here. They look pretty thick. So 
what I'm going to do here is I have them set together. So here's our individual tracks. Instead of going in and gaining them down uh, so I can kind of set them at a good level, I just pull them down on the individual tracks and then I send them to a bus. So that's kind of doing some gain staging inside my mix here instead of doing it as prep work here. So when I pull up the, the bus channel here, they're sitting around that negative 12 instead of sitting around negative six or negative five. There. So these are our main rhythm guitars here. Shouldn't need anything more than maybe some EQ here. These are actually re sitting really nicely. Maybe a touch of mid-range. So that's a piece we can add at the end. Uh, where's our other 12 string guitar? Okay. Can that sit with our other one? No, that needs to go by itself. Let's throw these in.
They've got all the mid-range they need. And I, in fact, I might tuck that back just a touch. Better. That's feeling good. Let's throw the other uh, the other slide guitar in here, or the other twelve string, my mistake. Uh, so this one's running in just the bridge section. Let's take a look at this. Another guy that's mid range heavy. That sounds good. Let's let's get this slide guitar fixed. I'm gonna throw a touch of compression on this guy.
These kind, these two kind of sit nicely together. Organ looks really even, shouldn't need anything here except EQ. All right, let's listen to all the music so far and get our organ in. So our organ here is another example of something where if we just gain staged it to a certain level, say we gain staged it up to negative 12 or negative 9, when we do put this in the track then I would have to pull this fader way, way down to get it to sit where it should depth-wise inside this track because I gain staged the volume up so much. So sometimes it's a visual thing and other times you have to be aware of where you're going to end up putting that inside the track so you don't end up having to pull the fader too far down. Let's hear how everything's sitting together. That sounded good. I want to hear it from the top here. I think we've got all of our instruments in besides this giant stack of background vocals. And then the only thing left is the lead vocals. Let's see where we're sitting here. Uh, I'm going to put the volume all the way up here and we're going to take a listen.
That's sounding really strong at the moment. So the last couple things we have to add, background vocals and lead vocal. Background vocals are gonna be pretty much just this middle section here and then a little bit at the end. And those are gonna kinda of act like the last piece of our arrangement. And then we'll have to add our lead vocal and we will be done with this track. Uh, thank you so much for hanging with me here on the stream today. If you wanna go a little bit more in depth into the mixing process, then make sure you check out the link in the description for my seven step mixing checklist. This is a free, simple PDF guide that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get more professional and more radio ready mixes in less time. It is completely free for you to download. So if you wanna go deeper into the mixing process, make sure you check that out, link in the description below. But thank you so much for hanging with me here on the stream today. Like I said, only a couple pieces left to the puzzle before we have this mix ready to be mastered. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you dig are digging these streams, excuse me, and I will see you in the next one.